really ask yourself, are you making art to escape or to control or to find leverage and power over your trauma? Or have you actually healed from that place so that your art will be coming from a healed place? Exhibiting Forgiveness is about an artist who utilizes his paintings to find freedom from his past. A black artist on the path to success who is derailed by an unexpected visit from his estranged father, a recovering crack addict desperate to reconcile. Together, they learn that forgetting might be a greater challenge than forgiving. For me, it was probably one of the greatest moving films that I've seen this year, personally, hands down, top five, top three, maybe even top one, probably top one. Exhibiting Forgiveness is a film by first time director Titus Kafar, and it's a very personal film. The film is mainly about his life and how he was raised with his father so that he can communicate to his own sons what he went through and even find healing in his own self and then with his family as well. I set out to help my children understand a little bit better, mm. uh, my two sons, um, about their father and about the, the world that I come from and how different that world is from the, from, from the one they're growing up in. After the movie, it was just very somber in the audience, in the theater. My wifey was crying on the way home. I was just mm, on the way home. And I think it's because there's so much apl applicability that we can take the movie and the principles and the morals and the values into our lives. And that is why I love cinema so much is when movies are able to communicate and not just communicate where you can emotionally connect with the film, but you can actually apply what you learn in the film to real life to actually enhance your life spiritually and psychologically and mentally and relationally. When we, when we came home last night, you were talking about how they weren't afraid of showing the rawness of everything that has to do with the Bible and faith in God. Mm -hmm. They didn't hold back. They did not hold back. And I think that was a very powerful thing to do because even in faith-based cinema, a lot of movies paint all of it to be like rose-colored. And to see that rawness of like really asking important questions and seeing the Word of God in such a interesting, like different, like agnostic light um, and still make the point of forgiveness being the most powerful thing in the film, I mm -hmm. think created a balance of reality and, and what faith can look like in a hard situation or circumstance. It didn't shrink back from a raw reality of what forgiveness and reconciliation might look like. And in an interview with Titus Kafar, the director, he was saying that he didn't want to portray a Hollywood forgiveness. As I was writing the script and coming to the end, I was trying to figure out a way to have a conversation about forgiveness that didn't feel like Hollywood forgiveness, yes. where it's easy, uh, it's unearned, everybody's just happy at the end, everything works right. out. Um, and forgiveness is a journey. It's a really, really long process for some people. I love cinema and stories that communicate real, raw life to us and, and don't give us a one puzzle solves all or one piece of the puzzle solves all, but more so it's very complicated. Like we're complex human beings mm -hmm. and forgiveness doesn't always mean reconciliation right in the moment. Mm -hmm. And so, and that looks different for everyone. And so the fact that he was able to be really honest in this story about his own forgiveness and reconciliation with his father, who knows where he's at with his father today, but it, 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 I think it, it, it hit on a level that mainstream Hollywood cinema doesn't hit. Um, it really seeps into the soul, especially with all the biblical themes, all the values, the family trauma, mm -hmm. like so much. Like, <clears throat> why, like after the theater, you were crying. Yeah. Why were you crying? I was crying because it really depicted the, the, the journey that it is to forgive someone, especially when it's like childhood trauma, because that's truly what it goes back to, to his childhood trauma. And it's not just like, a, oh, we don't live in the same house anymore, so you have nothing to do with my life, but rather, if you do come in into my life because we're family, like how are we gonna work th through these things? And I think one thing that Hollywood forgets to depict in its movies is that that actually takes time and healing is much more than just saying, okay, I forgive you. Like there are, 
things in the mind that change once you get traumatized by mm. a situation. And I think this movie not only shows the emotional um, drainage that it causes him to go through with his dad to actually be able to heal, but it just, the way that um, I think Hollywood forgets to do that is by, in a sense, covering it with just, oh, it should be fine, you know, let's move on and it's just that and it really isn't mm -hmm. and so that's what i can take from my own life where i've had to deal with childhood trauma as we know we all do have some level of childhood trauma and to move past that like really coming to the assessment of your own self and like where your mind is at and where your heart is at as well in the moment to actually take the step to acknowledge that you need to forgive I think it takes a lot of strength to do that because we are sometimes too afraid to take that step of forgiveness and really want to um, have that healing for ourselves that at the end is going to benefit the person that's forgiving but also releases the other person to not feel like they are in chains or, you know, mm -hmm. that they're just that person in someone else's eyes, you mm -hmm. know. And that's why I was crying, but also because of one of the last scenes in the movie that really hit me. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but I'm just going to say he metaphorically removed himself from the past. And that was like something that yeah, I know I've had to do. And then he laid himself on, on a chair just right next to the Bible. Mm -hmm. and so that was insanely deep. He cut himself off. Mm. not attached to it anymore another theme and motif and lesson that i saw in this film that was really personal for me and even you as artists there's a scene um where he's in conflict with his father about forgiveness and about letting go and his father is begging him to forgive but he struggles with forgiveness and that's the whole journey of the main character's uh story is his battle with forgiveness and, and letting go of the past. And there's a line that he tells his father in one of the last scenes. Oh, you think I made that art piece for you? No, I made that for myself because I can take the past in my art and have it at a chokehold. And it's his, it's his own way of control. And I think mm -hmm. as artists, I feel like there's two ways of dealing with trauma in the past as artists is one, using art to metaphorically fly away from your problems and not mm -hmm. confront it, mm -hmm. and then B, using your art as a way to take control of what happened to you in the past and manipulate yourself to think that you have some sort of power over it, mm -hmm. but really you're still traumatized and, you're, and the art is a result of that, yeah. but you're not actually going to the one that can heal. And that's the main thing that Terrell's mother in the film was begging him, pointing him, and Terrell's father was pointing him to, and that's God, God's forgiveness. And that whole biblical foundation of if you do not forgive others of their past sins, you will not be forgiven. And you see the manifestation of not being forgiven, how that manifests in Terrell's life in the movie is he has mm -hmm. torment, mm -hmm. he has panic nightmares, attacks, panic too. attacks, nightmares, um, depression, extreme anxiety um uh he like he's just so tormented internally and that's what the result of end quote god not forgiving you can look like it manifest he's refusing the forgiveness of god by not forgiving others that hurt him mm -hmm. and in return he's keeping himself in a prison trapped and everyone else is moving on and excelling not perfectly but purposely letting go of the past and continuing to try to walk forward into the future, but he's the only one that stuck back. And it just paints such a good picture of what Jesus tells us to do in the Bible and what that physical manifestation can look like on a day-to-day -day basis. And it wasn't until the end, at this point it's gonna be a spoiler review. Yeah. At, the, at, at the end, when he's able to realize and wake up that forgiveness is not for the other person the forgiveness is not for his father but forgiveness is really for him the nightmare stopped the anxiety stopped everything stopped because he was finally able to bring himself out that prison and to have a film that shows that biblical principle so well 
and raw was like finally you know mm -hmm. like it, it it's one of those films where it's not just you're going in it for entertainment and then you're coming out like that was a good, it was it was shot well yeah. it was good acting it was great acting but you come out this film analyzing yourself as to okay who have i not forgiven am i burdened and not am i um entrapped in in my in my own prison of unforgiveness and my anxieties panic attacks headaches am i forgiven by god do i really understand god's forgiveness and it's it's that's why i love cinema like this it's purposeful it it creates conversation within yourself to be able to confront those things those traumas those past those fears that um you might have been running away from and if you guys look up the director and all the interviews he's done and things at morehouse college and stuff like there is a lot of healing not only in the black community but in people in general um, that this film is being used to plant seeds into people to really encourage them and spark them and motivate them to do what's best for them and that is forgive mm -hmm. so that's like as an artist that was one of the things that just like yeah. it hit me being too fictitious in movies can create a false sense of reality in a person's mind and now you're following Hollywood's philosophy rather than what is actually real mm -hmm. and like the struggles that we have as people and, and how it, we actually get over them yeah and, and even, them. even within our souls and our hearts and going through that process and like if we're just looking up to these films and whatever, it's not really gonna do any good or it's not gonna edify you. But the raw films really bring something that it is necessary for the human mind kind of to like look at because just like Terrell and his father, like the father was prepared, but he wasn't. And so what does it look like to not be prepared to forgive and heal from something that hurt you? And then they, so the director takes us on that journey of what that looks like because the healing part, that can look different for every single situation. Um, but it's a healthy journey that he is now undergoing. But after like the moment and the decision that he made to forgive his father. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we all have our pain in common and like what that may look like may be a little different here and there in certain areas. But the, the devastation, the trauma, the hurt, it really carries on to everybody's lives. I feel like at an emotional level where we can always be sympathizing and empathizing with one another. And I really, I really love that about that film. Hurt people hurt people. Yeah. And like, that's what, you know, Terrell's father was also kind of explaining to Terrell, which is the main character of like how he had to raise his own son because of how his father raised him. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a it's just, generational thing. Like it goes, mm -hmm. it passes on down. And you got it. And we have to, we're the ones that have to break the cycle. Like we're, mm -hmm. each generation is called to break the cycle, but it really is hurt people, hurt people. Yeah. And I'm thinking of that scene where uh, Terrell was first interviewing Laron. And yeah. Laron was talking about his father who held a gun at his head and his mom's head and said, but he was still a good person. And Terrell got very agitated with that. Cause he didn't understand the aspect of how can you be a good person if you held a gun at your head. And it was a very raw and honest and brutal scene to kind of confront those things of like... And reconcile them in your mind as to how does that even make sense. Because it doesn't. Titus Kafar, he did a really good job at bringing to light the very complex questions and battles that we have about forgiveness and how it looks like on a day-to-day -day basis how god can forgive the most evil people but how in god's eyes everyone's evil on the same playing field like it, it, it he really brings those inner complexities that everyone has at some point in their life about god and about the faith um and it really he really um does a very honest job at displaying the battle and tension of the main character, Terrell, who has a very warped understanding of God because of the way he was raised with his father yeah. versus his mother, who always had faith in the Lord, always had faith in God, 
but still understands that it's a very evil world and we deal with this sin and that all that stuff gets in the way, but it doesn't change God's character and God's forgiveness and that we're still called to display his character even in the dire, worst, evil certain uh, circumstances and situations. And so that dichotomy between Terrell, who just has a lot of hate towards God because of his father, and um, Laron, his father, who was changed by God, he can't understand Laron because he can't understand God. He can't understand how his father changed and how his father is able to try and seek reconciliation and forgiveness because Terrell has a warped understanding of God's forgiveness and God's mercy and God's love. And that was such a, an unspoken theme for me in the film is how you're raised, especially with a father figure, does change your vision and your view about God and who God is. Because God has revealed himself to be a father to those that put their faith in Jesus. And so if he's a father, he's the greatest father of all. He loves you perfectly. He disciples you perfectly. He disciplines you perfectly. He gives you good gifts perfectly. Like he doesn't do anything from evil intentions. But Laurent is not a lot, not Laurent, Terrell, he's not able to see that because the father that he was raised with was a father that was good in the beginning, as you hear in the movie. But when crack came in, it took him off onto a deep end and he became a very abusive, uh, negligent, um, mm -hmm. just uncaring, unemotional father. But you have the heart for him because you see that it, it was just one bad decision that swept him up into a lifestyle of just addiction that he couldn't overcome by himself until God came to him and, 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 and restored him. And so that, that, that dichotomy, that theme, that battle, I think it's, it paints a picture as to like how a lot of people in this world see God, mm -hmm. um, not only with father issues, but just with like parental issues, just relational, relational issues. Level. Yeah, at a relational level, uh, people's, your view will get warped by God if you really don't know his character for yourself. Because how other people would treat you, you're going to start thinking about God like that because that's what you know. And that's the battle of Terrell in the film. But I'm so glad that throughout the film, you, you see that the shift, the slow shift. And even though we don't get a full, total, radical, I'm saved transformation at the end, it's still real and raw to the point where he forgives him. But now he just starts his journey about what reconciliation looks like, what healing looks like who God is, like learning about his ways, like it ends at that note. And I think that's very strong to communicate to the audience. Like, hey, everyone's, this journey is a long journey and it's not the Hollywood Christian version of like, you're saying everything's good, blah, blah, blah. No, now your journey, like understanding who you are and the relationships that you have and who God is and all that takes time. and. This film did a really great job at communicating that like really effectively for me. I think that one of the most important things <clears throat> too in the film is how much of a pillar his mom was. Mm -hmm. That she was the one in the middle trying, she, she was like the peacemaker. She was and the peacemaker. she was always in the middle of it. And like, if anything, she might have res uh, received the worst treatment. Mm -hmm. But you can see how enduring her love is even for her husband. Love endures and, and, all things. Yeah, and that even carries out to his own son where now the love that she has for his father is like he can't understand it. And I think just like how we can't understand the Lord's love for us, like that's depicted in the movie through um, his mother in a way where being the peacemaker, bringing them two together or even trying like, having them go or, or like just at least encounter each other for a brief moment like i think that is what um the lord jesus did for us on the cross at least or, or for, like just hear me out because it is by jesus that we are reconciled back to the father mm -hmm. and so we were 
confronted with God the Father, but Jesus being in the middle, being the peacemaker, mm. now we are reconciled mm. to our Father. And I feel like wow. that was a sense of where the mother was kind of standing on as a character and as a pillar in the story because it was because of her that he was able to see his father again. Mm -hmm. And now forgiving his father was what took time. Uh, there was a very powerful scene where Laurent, Terrell's father, was talking about how it, it, it's like, because of my mistakes, now you are a better father. And I can, in a way, relate to that mm -hmm. because um, based off of what I see for my child, like there's things I wouldn't repeat from what I've seen. And so I can understand what they were doing there. But Terrell was very like, it's not because of you that I'm a good father, but because, you know, I know what I want for my child. And I think that whether we like to admit it or not, we are going to make decisions based on how we felt to, to, to not treat someone else with that kind of pain mm -hmm. for them to go under now. So in a way, emotionally, he did cut that with his next generation, with his son. Like he didn't em emotionally abuse him or neglected him, but rather allowed him to feel his feelings, like he says in a specific scene. And then, um, but he still has to battle with his own thing, with, which doesn't make him any, any healthier, if that makes sense, as a father, because he's still carrying all of that. And there's a scene where this panic attack comes up and the child sees that, even that can be scary to the child. Mm -hmm. So Because he hasn't dealt with it. Yeah, and even even though um, the child saw that, like you can see the child being afraid, that can still cause a little of like, whoa, who is this man? And I want to touch on that because the child was scared, yeah. terrified at his father who was still battling with the effects and traumas of what happened 20, 30 years ago. Yeah. And the message in that, in that scene, in that story is deal with your trauma. Mm -hmm. Deal with it. Because if you don't deal with it and cut it at the root as soon as you can, it's going to affect uh, your marriages, your children, your other relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's something that uh, Terrell, you, you saw the, the, the bitter fruit of that. You saw the bitter root of that. He used his art to think that he was healing from the past but he was only using his art as a way to think that he has control and choke a chokehold of the past but he never healed from the past it wasn't until he actually confronted what he did not want to confront that he actually began to start the initial healing process of his trauma that's just a, a big call for artists really ask yourself are you making art to escape or to control or to find leverage and power over your trauma or have you actually healed from that place so that your art will be coming from a healed place the whole film he was battling and fighting against his mother and his father who were pointing him to the only one that can forgive and heal him and that's god and so for artists are you healed by god that's the question that this film is really going to speak to you about is are you truly healed by God or are you masking it in your art? Mm -hmm. But overall, I'll give this movie a five out of five. I think for me, it was probably one of the most purposeful, gripping, spiritually focused and, and filled films that I've seen this year that doesn't compromise. It doesn't hold back. It's very real and raw to the world that we live in. But if you're looking with discerning eyes, you can see God all in it. You can see the complexities of the human experience all in it, but you can see hope all in it. And this film gave me so much hope, so much hope. That's why I gave it a five out of five. What about you, babe? Obviously a five out of five at an emotional level because it did get me, it did grip me, and it was definitely very relatable in different um, aspects. But yeah, a five out of five of that. And then obviously, it was, it just looked amazing. Mm -hmm. It was just really amazing. It was a great film. Shout out to you, Titus Kafar. You did the dang thing. Yeah. You poured your heart out into this project and we love you for it. We honor you for that. Thank you for being honest with yourself, with God and with the world. 
I pray that many people will be blessed by this project and actually be moved to fulfill and do and obey the commandment that God told us to do, and that is to forgive others as we have been forgiven. And if you haven't received that forgiveness um, in Christ, I encourage you, ask Him to reveal to Him, to reveal to you the Father's love, Jesus' love, and just how much He's willing to forgive you so that you can find in yourself to be more than willing to forgive others so that you can be free. If you listened to the full conversation, I am so thankful you made it to the end. Let me know what you thought about the movie in the comments. And if you're new to this channel, this is where conversations of Christ, creativity, and cinema all intersect into one. Clicking that subscribe button will help this new channel out tremendously. And clicking the notification bell will keep you guys updated on every single movie review that will come out after this. Thank you guys so much.